I'm Jeremy. I'm AJ. And this is a biscuit with nuggets in it. As always, thank you for tuning in to our little uh, extraordinary times that we do. First story of today, North Korea. <laughs> it's uh, upsetting but true that they are trying to get around the um, deal that we made with them that they wouldn't test missiles and are thusly trying to test a uh, satellite delivery system up into space. Satellites. Um, That's really, really close to being a missile. Really, really, really close to being a missile. And so... Basically, President Obama, in kind of a unprecedented Obama kind of move, uh, basically said, if you do anything like that, we're going to shoot it down. Period. And thusly, the Pentagon has activated the uh, missile defense system uh, that, that we have, you know, kind of everywhere, but uh, particularly in the North Korean area. So, yeah, anything goes up, it's coming right back down. Because that's the American way. <laughs> Let's see what Kim Jong-un does. I'm going to go get that kid some food. <laughs> she needs it. All right. Well, uh, cover a bit. Um, don't know if you've heard yet. <laughs> Dallas, uh, Fort Worth area has gotten some uh, really bad uh, tornadoes today. Um, literally just tornado after tornado. Softball size hail. I mean, there's pictures in the link we're going to give you. There's tons of other links out there, too. You need to find on your own. I mean, there's pictures of uh, tractor trailers in midair just flying around. Massive de devastation. It, it's really bad. So if you know anybody in the, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, um, you might want to try and get a, in contact with them, at least see if they're all right. And if you live in that area, uh, one, stay safe. And two, after this is all over, realize it's going to be a lot of work. And anybody even further outside that area, help them out. These people are going to need help. Yeah, uh, speaking from from a, a point of view of a city that has been hit by several hurricanes in the last few decades. Um, yeah, it's sometimes really important just to give if you can. Give your time, give your, uh, you know, anything you can. Uh, all right, so moving on to the Department of Homeland Security, the uh, Department of Redundancy Department, if you will. Um, uh, in a very Obama-like move, they have uh, decided to try and grant un uh, illegal aliens unlawful presence waivers uh, based on the idea that uh, if they have a relative living in America, they can stick around even if they weren't here legally to begin with. Under current laws and statutes, they are, you know, taken, deported, and they can reapply to come in uh, under that same idea. Hey, I have family there. Oh, okay. You went come back through the legal way. Uh, this way, they basically just have to go in and be like, I have a family member here, and uh, I, I'm not going to tell you how I got here. Oh, okay. Here's the form. Um, <sighs> anyone who uh, is raising a child uh, should know that rewarding bad behavior like that sets a very dangerous precedent. So, um, you know, <laughs> I'm not happy about this. One. Yeah, really, really upsetting uh, news. All right. We are just this much closer to a goal that people have set for themselves back in uh, for 2000. Um, flying cars. I want my flying closer. car. They, they are this much closer. There is a, a car about to go on the market called, uh, I forgot the name Terrific. of it. The uh, Terra, oh, no, well, that's the name of the company, Terra Fuga, the, the Transition. It's got these little wings that pop down on the side. It gets about 35 miles to the gallon, up to 70 miles an hour on the ground, and up to 110 miles per hour, on, uh, per hour in the air, but only five gallons per hour. Um, yeah, I, it, it's going to cost in the hundreds of thousands, and you know, it's 270 something. It's $279,000 starting. Um, I'm guessing that's without power windows and stuff. Uh, <laughs> Still got to crank it. <laughs> Either way, we are this much closer 
to uh, flying cars, though you still do need a, a pilot's license for this thing. It's basically a two-seater Cessna that uh, can also drive 70 miles an hour on the ground. Uh, it looks, it's it's kind of uh, exciting, so uh, we're getting help. there. We're getting there. <laughs> Uh, don't don't think you're gonna be able to you know fly off of a uh, out of a traffic jam. It actually still needs a runway, but you know we're much closer. Maybe they could start putting runways by the roads. <gasps> HOV lanes are runways. Yes. Done. Okay. <laughs> we say HOV lane in Houston. It's one big lane in the middle, and it's only one way each way. Moving on. No, that's I forty five. But moving on. Ah, uh, ADD moment. <laughs> so. Um, the Beatles, uh, as some of you may know, is one of the biggest rock bands in all of history, and uh, you know, affected music forever with all the all the great things that they did. Uh, Cause well, they're awesome because they're awesome, and uh, you know, the people like uh, John Lennon will live in infamy forever for being awesome. But uh, apparently, uh, Sir Paul McCartney's son James, uh, who actually looks like a mix between Paul McCartney and Peter Griffin. Uh, <laughs> he kind of does. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He like you can tell he's he's the son of a McCartney, but um, also <laughs> just happens to have a, a chin. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Paul chin. Just saying. Right. Um, <laughs> he uh has leaked a few rumors as to the future of the Beatles two, uh, a band formed from the, uh, you know sons of the band members yeah he and uh you know son george harrison son of uh john lennon and uh son of ringo star but nice. apparently ringo has a couple of sons because uh the oldest one was like eh. but one of the other ones was like eh. so let's hope mm -hmm. i i personally hope for basically a a, a metal beatles so that would be awesome. Oh, Basically, oh, Helter Skelter being like the lightest thing that they do, and go <laughs> further from that. Oh, that would be awesome. Well, I guess we'll just have to see. All right, so uh, California's gone a bit too far again. Let's say uh, <laughs> Oakland's Oaksterdam. Um, they're calling it. Um, Basically, it was the College of Pot, and I say was because the feds came in and said, uh, nope, mine. <laughs> <laughs> like the feds sometimes do. Uh, it was, it was, it was a cannabis college, and they, they taught all manner of, you know, being able to grow it and its uses and... Horticulture. Horticulture. And, and, yeah, to, like be, to be fair makeup, to it, and... to be fair to it, it was a good agricultural college for the growing of marijuana. Right. Just happens to be its specialty. And Either way, it, because, it wasn't legal. And yeah, so because it like, was totally ah, no. illegal. <laughs> feds doing what feds do, kicked down the door and said, mine. It was a ridiculous amount that they, they got from there. I don't even remember. I guess van loads, yeah. I believe, is what they spoke in. Several uh, van loads. Stupid. <laughs> The moral of the story is don't be stupid, stupid. Even if it's, you know, medically legal in that state, still not legal still for recreational it. use. Exactly. They're trying. Uh, one of Oaksterdam's big, you know, big things was they were trying to legalize it for everyone. But, you know. <laughs> fail. <laughs> while, it's still, while it's still not legal, you fail, brethren and sisters. But moving on. Um, one, one thing that I... I have always uh, been a proponent of uh, since 9/11 was rebuilding the World Trade Centers. Not not even not even just the way they were, but just rebuilding on the site because um, I first off visited there in uh, August of 2001, and then yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that was crazy. Um, but also in the May of 2003. When there was a giant gaping hole there, that was still, it was mm. it was frightening to look at because, I mean, you know, you know what happened there, and you you can tell with this giant void in the ground, the void that is there, yeah, for so many people. And uh, I've always been a proponent of them building on, it. and they finally, finally have been uh, been going forward with the building plans for a new One World Trade Center building. And uh, and rebuilding the complex, 
uh, bigger, better, more awesome uh, if you can than it was. And uh, and the One World Trade Center has just reached and will surpass 100 floors, uh, which means it's going to be passing the Empire State Building soon as the tallest building in New York. And uh, well, yay! Get it done. Get it done, and, and let's let's get some uh, World of Trade going in that, eh? <laughs> Last little bit of news here. Nothing, well, I guess nothing too big. Um, it's awesome. It, it, it's amazing. So this uh, recently laid off uh, college professor was going through a thrift store because, you know, he was That's recently what you do. laid off. <laughs> <laughs> and he happened to find this uh, really nice uh, Picasso print. And he's like, okay, you know, it's probably just a reproduction. It was just like $14.14. And he, he got it. And then he looked closer at it and... Uh, because he's a college professor, and that's what college professors should do. Right. And he noticed a little signature at the bottom in red. Turns out this is a, uh, an original print as part of the original series that Picasso did with uh, uh, basically stone that he carved out and printed and then destroyed the stone. This Which thing is. A travesty, is travesty, by the way. I'm yeah. just going to throw that out there. Either way, this is an absolute original worth currently at probably around $6,000 and can double that if it gets into a museum. Because museums will pay more than <laughs> top dollar for, uh, for stuff. So, yeah, $14 investment. Might be getting, you know, 10, 12 grand, 14 grand out of it. So, one of those really good stories in this economy. <laughs> really, really good. So, uh, yeah, good luck with that. And, uh, as always, I'm Jeremy. I'm AJ. And... We'll see you tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yay. Yeah, tomorrow. I like tomorrow. <laughs>